SAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show, now entering its second decade. With all the scores, highlights, and coverage from around the state of Alabama, nobody covers Alabama high school football like we do. Heard on great radio stations all over Alabama and featuring live reports from experts around the state. If it's happening in high school, we cover it. Presented by Jacksonville State University, the Alabama Department of Transportation, Jax, Main Street Family Care, Russell Dewitt Centers, Southern Union State Community College, Southeastern Land Group, and by wickedly delicious Wickles Pickles. Now, let's get into some football. This is the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show. Good evening, everyone, and welcome into the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show. We are here for week three of the Alabama High School Athletic Association season, better known as the fourth week of competition. But here we are. Unusual week this week because... Over 100 games were played last night. Wow. <laughs> and uh, a lot of teams choosing to move their games from tonight because of rain expected uh, around the state. You probably have seen and heard some of that, the games that you've gone to tonight around the state of Alabama. We're glad you're here with us. JJ here with you. And Luke Robinson there. No, Andy Graham. Not to be confused. Here. Not to be confused. Luke, I don't know. There's something going on in Austin, Texas tomorrow. <laughs> There's, I hear there could be a game. There could be a football game. Uh, that, but we've got, listen, we've got fabulous football games to talk about tonight uh, because there were a lot, Andy, and I love this time of year. It's the meat of region play. And you start to see some of these huge matchups. Uh, I'm talking about Opelika Central Phoenix City. I'm talking about UMS Wright and Gulf Shores. Uh, you know, all of these huge matchups around the state. Uh, region play, where it matters, and the playoffs uh, are determined by what happens in these games. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, this is when it really gets fun. Uh, the games matter a little bit more, like you say. Uh, it's got a little bit different feel to it. And these are the kind of games you look back on, or, you, you know, when you're four or five weeks down the road and you start thinking about who's making the playoffs, who's not making the playoffs. Who's playing at home, home, who's going to the Home field advantage yep. or not. These are the games that matter. That's right. And – Tonight, Central Phoenix City goes on the road. Opelika spent a couple of years down in 6A, back up in 7A this year, hosting number one Central Phoenix City, and down goes Frazier. Don't know if a lot of people saw that one coming. Yeah. And for it to be as uh, low scoring a game as it was, it was yep. 14 off or uh, obviously going into uh, overtime. And I know Opelika had a chance to win in regulation, had a field goal blocked as time expired, uh, and then holds Central in uh, overtime and gets the field goal to win it. Didn't see it, but it sounded like it was one of those where there was no way it was going to be good. Yeah. It was going to be blocked <laughs> by about five people. So, right. Yeah. Either way, congratulations to the Opelika Bulldogs. I mentioned when Luke uh, a couple of weeks ago when Luke was here, uh, we were going through the 7A top 10, and I said, you know, Opelika is just kind of sneaky good back there. Nobody's really talking about him. No more sneaky for you, Opelika. We, we see you now. Is it time, Ryan? Let's get to it. Our first scores on the fours of tonight. We usually do a Thursday recap, but since there were over 100 games last night, we're just going to go ahead and get started with 7A. Andy, give us those top 10 scores. Now, that would be quite a recap. Yeah. Uh, number, let's go 7A. Number one, as we mentioned, the upset of the night. Uh, number seven, Opelika takes down number one, Central Phoenix City, 17 to 14. Number two, Auburn defeated Jeff Davis, 31 to nothing. Number three, Fairhope over Mary Montgomery, 38 to 23. Number four, Hoover over Vestavia Hills, 20 to 14. Number five, Hewitt Trustful over number 10, Tuscaloosa County, 35 to seven. It was number six, Thompson defeating Spain Park 35 to 14. Number eight, Bob Jones and Grissom. Don't have a score for that one, but we will. Bob Jones that. was up by uh, about three scores in that game in the, yeah. in the uh, end of the third quarter, So, but we don't have a final on it yet. Number nine, Enterprise over Smith Station 58 to 14. 
All right, and some other 7A scores for you. We've got Daphne defeating Davidson tonight, 40-21. to It was Dothan defeating Prattville, 14-10. to Low-scoring game there, too. Chelsea over Oak Mountain, 21-7. to Austin defeats Florence, 26-14. to James Clemens over Huntsville, 27-23. to And Sparkman shuts out Albertville, 53 to nothing. Scores on the fours is brought to you by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles. When we come back, we've got Inside the AHSAA with our friend Ben Thomas from AL.com, a conversation that we had yesterday at our Player of the Week from Main Street Family Care is coming up for you too. Here on the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show. It's time for the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show Player of the Week. Brought to you by Main Street Family Care. Celebrating outstanding performances on the gridiron. This week's AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show Player of the Week is Hanley High School senior running back Jamarius J. Haynes with the performance of a lifetime last Friday night. Rushing for 476 yards and five touchdowns in the Tigers' 54-41 Class 4A Region 4 win over Jacksonville. His rushing total came on 30 carries and thrust him into the spotlight with the second most rushing yards in AHSAA single game history. Congratulations to Hanley High School senior running back Jamarius Haynes, this week's AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show Player of the Week. Brought to you by Main Street Family Care. Hey, it's Brett Pritchard, and I'm here to tell y'all about Sims Foods, who you know better as Wickles Pickles. Wickles Pickles, that 90-year-old recipe, wickedly delicious, relish, okra, and pickles. From Saturday sandwiches, tailgate snacks, to holiday dinners with your family and friends. From their family to yours, Wickles Pickles, those wickedly delicious pickles. Wickles Pickles, wickedly delicious pickles. Hey, honey, it's Mom. Just wanted to call and check in, see how everything's going. You'll probably say not to worry. Everything is great. But we just, we miss you. I'll call you back later. Hey, how are you? Hey, tell me everything. Everything's great. I love it here. Hey, slow down, buddy. This ain't Talladega, and that race car driver's number on your back window, you ain't him. Truth is, just 10 miles over the speed limit, and your chances of killing someone are four times higher. So forget the number on your window, and memorize the one on that orange prison jumpsuit. Stop speeding before speeding stops you. Drive safe, Alabama. A message from your Alabama Department of Transportation. long ago, when you or your family needed medical care, your options for treatments were limited. You could wait a week before seeing a doctor or shell out hundreds of dollars for an emergency room visit. At Main Street Family Care, we are committed to helping you heal better and feel better fast. Main Street Family Care works hard to make sure you don't have to leave town to take care of your health. Main Street Family Urgent Care. Heal better, feel better. Welcome back to the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show, where it's time for Inside the AHSAA with Ben Thomas of AL.com, brought to you by the Alabama Department of Transportation, who reminds you to buckle up and drive safe, Alabama. And Ben Thomas of AL.com joins us now. Ben, hope you're uh, doing well down there, getting ready for some movements, a lot of games being moved to Thursday for weather considerations. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, down on the coast we didn't have a lot, but, uh, I mean, there are a lot more games Thursday now than they were Friday, than our Friday. So it just uh, kind of splits up the workload, but uh, that's okay. We'll all in. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll play football for sure. Hey, let me ask you, now that we're a few weeks in uh, to this 2022 season, just looking around the state in general, uh, what players are you seeing that are really kind of standing out to you, and has anybody kind of jumped off the radar to you? Um, yeah, a couple. Uh, you know, 
I think Kamari McClellan, the Clay Chalkville quarterback, they're playing uh, Pinson Valley in a big showdown uh, Friday night. You know, their quarterback uh, graduated last year. They won the state championship, and he went on to Louisville. But Kamari's coming in there from Oxford and, of course, has a couple of talented receivers and, and juniors, Jalen Mbakwe and Mario Craver. All three of those guys really have stood out. But Kamari coming in there really makes a difference for them. They may be the best team uh, statewide that we have. Um you know, a couple of young players down in my neck of the woods at Sarah Land, they have three sophomores who really are going to be on the recruiting radar, already are, but, you know, as they get to their junior and senior years, will be some of the best recruits we have. That's their quarterback, K.J. Lacey, who transferred over from Daphne. Uh, Ryan Williams is a sensational wide receiver. You're going to hear a lot about him, Jay, in the next couple of years. And then Sante McWilliams, their running back. All those guys are good players. Uh, up in the north part of the state, Bob Jones, quarterback Ray Hardy, was an all-state player. He's done another good job uh, this year. And, of course, you know, you got the top guys who are, are defenders, Peter Woods at Thompson and Tony Mitchell. You know, we've talked about Thompson kind of struggling out of the gate a little bit against two very good teams. But uh, those guys are going to start shining as well as they get back into region play for them. Let me ask you about a couple of games. We'll start down in your neck of the woods, down along the coast. UMS right in Gulf Shores, that's a big one. I just wrote a story on that this week. Yeah, uh, number four versus number one in Class 5A, um, and both teams in the top 25. Two teams coming from opposite sides of the spectrum. Gulf Shores has never started 4-0, and, um, and you know, they, they've only won. You know, they haven't been to the playoffs since 2013. UMS obviously is on the other side of the spectrum. I think they've lost, I looked it up, they've lost 13 region games in Terry Curtis's 24 years as a head coach. Right. Uh, and they're number one in the state. But but Gulf Shores is a team with Mark Husband. A lot of people know that name, former college coach, uh, taking over in his second year. They're, they've dropped from 6A to 5A this year. Um, and so they're very competitive. Beat Faith Academy last week, which was a milestone win. And Coach Husband told me, look, this game against UMS Wright is the biggest game in program history. Um, you know, do you wonder if that puts too much pressure on them for because, honestly, for UMS, it's just another game. I mean, they've been in games like this over and over over the years. So, But that should be a good one in Mobile. Um, and I, you know, I'm anxious to see if, if, if this is how, you know, Gulf Shores Coach Hustis has said, we think this is going to be a measuring stick of where we are. I'm interested to see where they are. Interesting game, too, at the Hoover Met with Vestavia Hills and Hoover. Uh, you got Robert Evans coming in, taking over at Vestavia Hills. Uh, you got a new coach at Hoover. Should be an interesting one. Should be. You know, Hoover's dominated this rivalry. I think they've won 14 in the last 15 uh, against Vestavia. Two new coaches, as you mentioned, Coach Evans, um, and then also uh, Wade Waldrop at Hoover. Uh, so a different look to the rivalry. We had a story on AL.com Thursday about this rivalry. I thought Robert Evans had some interesting comments about, about Hoover. And, look, he said, look, I like some of those people over there, but I'm going to pull for them to lose every game they can unless it helps us. And also, he, you know, he had some interesting comments about the Hoover Met not being a, as good a venue as it once was. So I don't know if he's trying to fire up the rivalry or not. <laughs> but uh, And he mentioned, look, they're both kind of in the same place, Ch- Chase and Thompson. Vestavia Hills just lost to Thompson last week. Hoover gets them later in the year. Um, so we'll see, you know, how close these teams are to, to that Thompson measuring stick. Uh, it's going to be another fun weekend of games, Ben. Enjoy them, and we'll catch up with you next week. Hey, sounds good, Jay. Thanks. All right. Thank you very much, Ben Thomas, uh, Like we were talking about with Ben, just some some big games going on. There's one that uh, we're still waiting on a final from. We'll talk about here in a second with scores on the fours. But uh, Sarah Lamb was leading Spanish fourth uh, a couple of touchdowns later, uh, late in that game. So, uh, we'll see how that one comes out when the finals come around, uh, but still waiting on that one now. Let's get to scores on the fours. It's brought to you by Wickedly Delicious, Wickles, Pickles, Andy, the 6A, top 10. Number one, Clay Chalkville over Pinson Valley, the number 16, 14 to 12. Another really good game here tonight in the state of Alabama. Number two, Mountain Brook over Woodlawn, and not a very good game, 56 to 6. Uh, JJ mentioned that Sarah Land. And Spanish Fort, uh, we will get a final on that one before the night is over. Number four, Hillcrest Tuscaloosa over Hueytown in a high-scoring affair, 54-44. to 44. Number five, Theodore, 35 to nothing over Baldwin County. 
Number seven, Briarwood over, uh, falls to Pelham. Uh, Pelham over the number 17, Briarwood, 35 to 34. That is amazing. Yet another. A really, really, really yeah. good game. Uh, Gardendale, the number eight team, was open this week. Number nine, Hartzell over Columbia, 63 to six. Other scores around the 6A classification, McGill Tulin over Robertsdale, 38 to seven. St. Paul's over Murphy, 35 to seven. It was with Tumka over Park Crossing, 27 to eight. Uh, Helena defeats Chilton County, 35, 28. Homewood over Calera, 48 to 38. It was Brookwood over Central Tuscaloosa, 26-22. Northridge over Bessemer City, 40 to 12. Minor over Jackson Olin, 30 to nothing. Parker over Mortimer Jordan, 33 to nothing. And Center Point over Pell City, 56 to 10. I'll finish those off in just a little bit. Scores on the Fords is brought to you by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles. When we come back, our first guest of the night on the AHSAA Radio Network. It's truck season at Glenn Smith in Opelika. We have an excellent supply of Chevrolet Silverados and GMC Sierras with giant discounts and low monthly payments. New Chevrolet Silverados up to $6,000 off or payments as low as $4.99 a month with zero money down. GMC Sierras discounted up to $5,000 off. Zero money down, no payments till 2023 at Glenn Smith in Opelika. Get ready to smile. Concrete Basement and Walls, LLC, 205-229-0234. Call owner Eric McKenzie now to get your free quote now. 205-229-0234. Concrete Basement and Walls, LLC. You want the best opportunity to be successful in life. You deserve that opportunity. Well, you just happens to be in our motto. Central to you. Central to your success. Your future is right now. Don't wait. Make your dreams a reality by enrolling at Central Alabama Community College. Register today at CACC.edu. The Alex City Parks and Rec Department serves the residents of Alexander City with quality facilities and programs designed to positively affect the lives of the citizens. From youth sports programs to adult activities and our senior center, the Alex City Parks and Rec offers services for all ages. The Cooper Rec Center, Lake Winds Golf Course, and the Senior Activity Center are just some of the great features the Alex City Parks and Rec Department provides for the people of Alex City. For more information on any of our programs, call 256-329-6736. So, you finally got the boat, ATV, or side-by-side -side of your dreams, huh? But make it yours with marine-grade audio that'll provide crisp, high-quality sound that's loud enough to be heard, whether you're cruising on the lake or hitting a mud hole. Come see Steve at the Car Stereo Shop in Auburn, so you'll be ready to crank up the volume. Whoa, but wait, you don't have to pull out of the water and trailer it to Auburn. The Car Stereo Shop can handle all of your work at any one of the Lake Martin Marinas. Hi, I'm Scott Blake. I'm Angie Richardson, and we are the loan team here at Movement Mortgage. Whether you're a first-time home buyer or you've gone through the process before, our mission is to help you move forward with the purchase of your future plans. Call me at 256-397-2771. Or call me at 256-794-1003. Scott Blake, NMLS number 527945. Angie Richardson, NMLS number 216556. Movement Mortgage supports equal housing opportunity, NMLS number 39179. For licensing information, please visit NMLS Consumer Access. Org. Concrete Basement and Walls, LLC, 205-229-0234. Call owner Eric McKenzie now to get your free quote now. 205-229-0234. Concrete Basement and Walls, LLC. Welcome back to the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show. Heard on great stations all over the state of Alabama. We're glad that you're with us. If you're traveling home from a game tonight, uh, we will get to your game sooner or later. Right now, we're going to talk about one of the big games going on in the state tonight that lived up to the billing. A lot of great games around the state tonight. This one was a good one in 4A with number five, Aniana, taking on number eight, Cherokee. And with us is uh, Rachel Simmons of the Blunt County who covered that game tonight. And uh, Rachel, uh, you know, we love it when good region games with good ranked teams lives up to the hype. You get a three-point game tonight. Uh, sounded like it was a great one to watch. 
Definitely, definitely. Um, probably one of the biggest games in 4A Region 6. Um, we haven't played Cherokee County, or Oneonta hasn't played them since 2019. So um, after rezoning last year, uh, they came back into our region, and um, and it was um, a game you didn't want to miss. Um, Oneonta started off with a field goal in the first quarter, uh, just really struggled to do anything, move the ball. Uh, Cherokee County answered pretty quickly with a touchdown um, by their quarterback, Cade Hopper. And um, into the second quarter, not much happened. There was lots of penalties. Um, Aniana could not get a drive going. Uh, Cherokee County scored their second touchdown uh, by their running back, um, Jacob Cornejo. He uh, came into the game. I think everybody kind of expected him to be a problem, and he was. He ran all over the field. He was a um, great running back for Cherokee County Warriors. Um, Oneonta went into the half, uh, and they they used Will Taylor at uh, QB. They kind of um, haven't picked, I guess, a starting quarterback all season. They, they've utilized a couple and uh, came out second half with a different plan, and it seemed to work. Uh, Landon Abernathy lines up under center, and um, <clears throat> they begin to kind of chip away. Third quarter was scoreless for both teams. Um, the defense on both sides just really buckled down, and um, uh, like I said, the, the game was kind of played with penalties. There was 12 penalties between both teams, so I'm pretty costly at you know crucial moments. Um, in the fourth quarter, it was all on Iana, um Fluff Bothwell, Arneana's running back, he, he came into the, this game uh, leading. He's leading the county for Blount County up here, but uh, Arneana's lead rusher, he had over 700 yards coming into this game. Um, and uh, he, he put up some, some, you know, great yards this game too. Uh, kind of struggled the first half um, to find uh, holes and openings, but second half, he came through when it counted. They put up um, six points in midway through the fourth quarter. Tried to com uh, convert on a two-point conversion, but it, d it didn't work out for them. They were stopped. And um, then with about a minute and a half left in the game, um, they scored again. Fluff Bothwell broke free for a um, about a 60 60-yard touchdown, I believe it was, and uh, they went for a two-point conversion um, to kind of give them a comfortable lead, and they were able to, to um, get that. It was successful, and it brought their score to 17-14. Uh, to 14. And, um, you know, Cherokee County, they got back out on the field, their offense, and tried to put together some drives, but uh, Aniana's defense really came through when they needed to. Uh, had several quarterback hurries that just really um, – Put Cherokee County in the bond. They couldn't complete the passes they need um, to advance and uh, turned over on downs with about 20 seconds left in the game. And Aniana ran the clock out, and and that was all she wrote. Um, <clears throat> we had, uh, you know, concerns about the weather throughout the game, but it held off until about the final two, three minutes of the game. Um, just you know, we've seen rain. that. We've seen that, Rachel, in a lot of games around the state where the rain kind of held off until late, but. Uh, again, a huge win tonight, a region win for Aniana, 17-14 to 14, over Cherokee County. That's Rachel Simmons of the Blunt County. And, Rachel, thank you so much for the time tonight, and we'll catch up with you down the road, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Rachel Simmons there of the Blunt County, and her and uh, Amy doing a great job there uh, covering high school football over there. And yeah, another huge, uh, close region game. Absolutely. I'm glad the weather held. I mean, you know. You have a big game like this, you want it to be decided on field, not any, any kind of X. Yeah, well, especially especially if you get a whole lot of rain. Yeah. Andy, let's get into some more scores on the force. Presented by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles. You got the 5A top 10, my friend. I absolutely do. Number one, UMS Wright takes down number four, Gulf Shores, 35 to 28. It was number two, Pleasant Grove, falling to the number six team, Ramsey, 21 to 14, number three leads over St. Clair, St. Clair County, no problem there, 52 to 13. Number five, Gunnersville over Douglas, 40 to six. Number uh, seven, Moody over Cleburne County. <clears throat> they were 60, in a bad Moody. Yes, yeah, 62 to seven, yeah. uh, uh, an unpleasant affair. Uh, number eight, Viger over Williamson, 24 to nothing. Number nine, Eufaula takes down Greenville, 43-7. to 
And number 10, Arab over Sardis, 42. Some other scores around 5A, Alma Bryant out of 7A defeats Citronelle 7-6. It was Alberta over LaFleur, 20-14. Selma over Holtville, 18-7. Shelby County over Jemison, 23-6. Beauregard over Tallahassee, 14-6. Central Clay County over Elmore County, 49-21. Fairfield over, uh, or I'm sorry, Jasper over Fairfield, 34-26. Hayden defeats John Carroll, 33-19. It was Winona over Carver, Birmingham, another great game, 35-34. Alexandria over Lincoln, 28-21. Southside Gadsden over Springville, 42-20. Ardmore over Lawrence County, 24-8. Boaz over Crossville, 55-0. AP Brewer over East Limestone, 27-21. And Russellville shuts out West Point, 27-0. Scores on the fours brought to you by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles. We have to choose our AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show Game of the Week next. I won't have much trouble. We'll get, we'll get to it in a minute. Now, another edition of This Week in the AHSAA. News and notes from around Alabama high school athletics brought to you by Jacksonville State University. Pinson Valley forfeited its game against Florence after self-reporting a rule issue involving a player who was ruled ineligible by the AHSAA, according to school officials. Pinson Valley won the season opening game against Florence 27-17 and beat McAdory 21-13 in its second game. The forfeit means the Indians, who were idle last week, are 1-1 one one for the season. Class 6A 5th-ranked Pinson Valley plays its first Region 6 game tonight, hosting number 1 Clay Chalkville. And that's a look at this week in the AHSAA. News and notes from around Alabama high school athletics. Brought to you by Jacksonville State University on the AHSAA Radio Network. Russell Dewitt Center and Building Supply Stores have the tools and materials to get the job done right, whether you're a professional contractor or just a weekend do-it-yourselfer. With everyday customer conveniences like a drive through lumber yard, price match promise, and our best rewards program, each of our nine locations offer top brands and building materials like lumber, hardware, tools, paint, lawn and garden, and much more. Visit today and see what Russell Dewitt Center and Building Supply can help you build tomorrow. Hey, it's Brett Pritchard, and I'm here to tell you all about Sims Foods, who you know better as Wickles Pickles. Wickles Pickles, that 90-year-old recipe, wickedly delicious, relish, okra, and pickles. From Saturday sandwiches, tailgate snacks, to holiday dinners with your family and friends. From their family to yours, Wickles Pickles, those wickedly delicious pickles. Wickles Pickles, wickedly delicious pickles. Life is a sequence of little successes. The story of my Southern Union success began the day I walked on campus. Making new friends, mastering a new skill, reaching a personal goal, the encore performance, the first date, the internship, and now, soon, the dream job. That's the story of my Southern Union success. Register for classes and get ready to watch your Southern Union story come to life. My name is Dave Milton with Southeastern Land Group. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our company. We sell farmland and timberland in Alabama and the surrounding states. Not only do we have a land sales division, but we also have a timber sales division where we can help you with your timber sales and your timber appraisal. There's 22 of us in our group scattered throughout the southeastern United States. We are a full service land and timber sales company. We do with farmland, timberland, cattle property, poultry farms. 866-751-LAND. Go to the website, selandgroup.com. I wish that people got less excited about celebrities and more excited about people like teachers and firemen. You know, folks who make a difference every day. Well, I bet you had a favorite teacher or a family member who was helped by a first responder. Life insurance offers these everyday heroes a little something extra, like discounts to help those who help 
others. If you're a teacher, preacher, first responder, active military, a state or federal employee, see what Alpha can do for you. Alabama Power first generated hydro energy in 1914 at Lay Dam, harnessing the power of water to bring electricity to our state. Today, more than a century later, Lay Dam is one of 14 Alabama Power hydro plants that provides Alabamians clean, reliable, affordable energy with zero emissions. And it's one more way we're helping elevate Alabama. The taste of the South starts out here. However you roll into work, you can bring the flavor with Jack's Breakfast Catering. Huge scratch-made buttermilk biscuits and hearty breakfast sandwiches, mixed or matched, starting at just $15. Don't forget to add delicious fresh ground Royal Cup coffee and classic breakfast sides, because great work starts with great breakfast. Breakfast catering, starting at $15 from Jack's. All about the South. Welcome back to the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show. JJ and Andy with you. Week three of the Alabama High School Athletic Association season tonight has been a fantastic uh, week, even though, you know, the, the games kind of got evenly split last night to tonight. There's usually about 200-plus games in the state, and about a little over 100 of them were played last night. So uh, it's been a little easier on our score gatherers. I, oddly enough, I mean, you got <laughs> scores, you know, you got games on Thursday nights, you got games on Friday night all split up. You got a heavy threat of rain. Yeah. And this is the night you have all these great games. It's yeah. weird how it works out. All right, so uh, I want to finish up when we did 6A scores on the fours. I ran out of time. I want to finish up these last five or six. Uh, we had Oxford defeating Huffman 47-8. to Muscle Shoals over Athens. Great rivalry game there, 28-20. You had Decatur over Coleman, 39-36. Another fantastic game. Uh, let's see, Gadsden City defeated Fort Payne, 18 to nothing. It was Hazel Green over Buckhorn, 49-42. Lee Huntsville over May Jemison, 42-26. to All right, Andy, it is time for the Russell Do It Center Game of the Week. And the way we do this is we choose a Game of the Week. Flip uh, a coin. That's, you know, we, we kind of we stick, stick to the simple around here. There we go. Um, I don't. I don't know if you. I mean, some of these. Some of these scores have been tremendous. Some of these games have been off the charts. I think my pick, and if you differ, that's that's fine. It's one of those nights you could pick a bunch of them, but I, I got to go with number seven and seven A Opelika, at home, knocking off number one Central Phoenix City. I don't think many people would have picked Opelika, even a, a top seven team. Uh, playing at home, I don't think many people would have picked the Bulldogs to win that game, but they knock off the Red Devils. Number one goes down. Opelika uh, takes an early region uh, head start there, um, and I, I got to go with that as my Russell Do It Center game of the week. I completely agree. I, when you mentioned it in the you know intro in the last segment, I, that's the first game that came to my mind. Um, a kind of a, a bit of a surprise, like you said, but I think mainly not because people. Uh, don't think Opelika is that good of a team, but because they think Central Phoenix City is that good yeah. because of the way they've been playing and the way they've been scoring. Uh, but for Opelika to do that and go down and have, you know, to get their heart broken in, over, in, in regulation and still be able to come back and uh, win it in overtime, that says a lot about that team. Absolutely. I, I talked to um, a reporter. Uh, I'm going to leave their name out of it because I didn't ask for permission to share it. Uh, but I talked to a reporter not too long ago who told me, ah, you know, the 7A state championships, Central, Auburn, Hoover, Thompson. Maybe we pay a little attention to Opelika now. That's our Russell DeWitt Center game of the week, the AHSAA radio network built by Russell DeWitt Center. Let's jump right in to another scores on the fours. Andy, the 4A top ten. Number one, Montgomery Catholic, no problem with Slocum, 58 to nothing. Number two, Handley over White Plains in another blowout, 48 to nothing. It was number three, Andalusia, 50 to nine over Bullock County. I sense a theme. Number four, Northside over Curry, 40 to nothing. Number five, as we mentioned earlier, Aniana takes down Cherokee County over the number 18, 17 to 14. Now that was a really good one. Number six, Aniston finally outlasts number seven, Jacksonville, 30 to 23. That game went back and forth. Uh, number nine, Montgomery Academy over Dale County, 30 
to 13. And number 10, Orange Beach over Satsuma, 37 to 12. All right. Uh, Orange Beach, is that where Jamie DeBose is now? You got me. I believe it is. Okay. Uh, T.R. Miller over Jackson, 32-29. It was St. Michael over Scambia County, 42-13. Booker T. Washington over Geneva, 26-7. American Christian over Bibb County, 20-13. Hale County over Holt, 26-8. Montevallo over Dallas County, 28-0. West Blockton over Sipsy Valley, 18-14. Munford defeats Talladega, 56-17. Corner over Cordova, 27-26. Oak Grove over Hamilton, 27-14. Dora over Haleyville, 21 to 12 Fairview over Good Hope 27 to 6 Brooks over West Limestone 64 29 West Morgan over Central Florence 42 to nothing Deschler over East Lawrence 70 to 13 Rogers over Wilson 62 26 Madison County over New Hope 14 to 7 Priceville over DAR 47 nothing and Randolph over North Jackson 52 to 14 when we come back we'll go down south for UMS Wright and Gulf Shores stick around Brew Baker, it's a brand new day. Go, Brew Baker, go. So come on down and drive away. Go, Brew Baker, go. From our dealership to your driveway. Go, Brew Baker, go. Brew Baker's gonna make your day. Save some time and shop online anytime at brewbaker.com. It's better at brewbaker.com. Finding a job might be tough, but starting your new career has never been easier. Wellborn Cabinet in Ashland has a wide array of career opportunities with benefits. General labor production, skilled cabinet builders, product assembly line, shipping, over-the-road truck drivers, clerical, marketing, security, daycare, office clerks, and so much more. Apply in person, 38669 Highway 77 South in Ashland, or online at wellborn.com. Building cabinets, building careers, and building our community. Fall means football, family, and outdoor fun. Here at Opelika RV Center, we've got you covered. For over 20 years, you've trusted Opelika RV to deliver the best brands at the best price. Fifth wheels, travel trailers, toy haulers, and so much more. It's easy to own. Payments start at a super low $98 a month. We got parts and the best service around. Local and family owned for 20 years, and now we're ready to serve you. Call, click, or stop by today and let us prove to you that it's easier to own here at Opelika RV Center. Highway 280, Opelika. Skag, the toughest name in lawnmowers. Unmatched quality and performance for over three decades. The clear choice. The best mower money can buy for work or at home. Top lawn care professionals and discerning homeowners know that Skag means productivity and reliability. Every Skag mower is proudly built right here in the USA. Don't settle for anything less than simply the best. Skag. Satterfield Outdoor Living on Highway 280 in Alex City. When visiting Mission Thrift in Auburn, you'll always find a wide selection of items at great prices. Mission Thrift carries your favorite name brand clothing like Patagonia, Free People, Lily Pulitzer, and so many more, along with antique pieces and a variety of household items. Every week, Mission Thrift introduces fresh items to the floor, truly giving you a treasure hunt experience. If you're looking for a truly unique thrift experience, head to Auburn and visit Lifesavers Mission Thrift, located on East University behind Zaxby in Auburn. All donations are tax deductible and benefit a charity. Have you met your local farmer's insurance agent, Patrick Holina? He proudly serves Tallapoosa County and Alexander City families and businesses and is ready to review your existing policies or provide a no-obligation quote today. Call the Holina Agency at 256-234-0037 or stop in today at 704 Commerce Drive to get smarter about your insurance. Again, that's the Holina Agency, 256-234-0037. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Underwritten by Farmers, Truck Fire Insurance Exchanges, and Affiliates. Products not available in every state. Welcome back to the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show. JJ and Andy with you as we uh, roll through week three of the Alabama High School Athletic Association football season. And we go to the Southeastern Land Group Hotline and talk to our buddy, with the network here, Mr. David Jones, who was down in South Alabama tonight, David, for one of the premier games of the week, another one that lived up to the hype, UMS Wright and Gulf Shores. How you doing, my friend? Man, I'm doing great. How you and Andy doing tonight? 
Really good, really good. Tell us about it. UMS Wright gets a seven-point win, 35-28. You said the game was off the charts good. Yeah, it's, it's probably one of the best high school games I've watched in a long time. You know, I've, I've seen a bunch of them. Uh, I had 21-17 UMS as my prediction. Uh, Andy well knows that my predictions are off a lot of the time. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, 63 points scored tonight. Uh I'm not going to give you a scoring recap because you guys have a show to do. But, uh, my goodness, Gulf Shores took the opening kickoff and marched straight down the field and scored. And uh, UMS took the return kickoff and did the same thing, and we were off to the races. Uh, J.J., there was only one punt in this game. Wow. Uh, the Gulf Shores punted once. UMS lined up to punt and ran their famous uh, snap count special, and, and uh, Gulf Shores jumped off sides, and they got a first down, so they did not have to punt. Um, just an incredible, you know, Jay Cozio is one of the best defensive coordinators in the business. And, uh, of course, I had mixed emotions tonight because I coached at Go Shores for many years, and my son-in-law was on the UMS coaching staff. So it, it was a uh, nip and tuck for me tonight sitting there. And, and just incredible game. Cole Blaylock, uh, South Alabama commit, uh, fantastic game. Joe Lott with UMS uh, as well. And then the quarterback, uh, uh, Sutton Snipes uh, did, a, did a great job tonight. And, and the four skill players for Gulf Shores it just make a huge difference. Ronnie Royal, one of the best running backs in the state. Um, uh, R.J. Uh, Gardner as well. And, and it, everybody in the state, J.J., knows that when you go into Urban Cooper Stadium at UMS, it's hard to win. I mean, there have been tales and tales of people that come out of there and say, man, we didn't have a chance. You know, and and Gulf Shores didn't help themselves tonight. Gulf Shores had four personal foul penalties. They had a horse collar tackle. They had three holding calls. Uh, they had an illegal touching on an onside kick attempt, followed by two unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. And the next thing you know, UMS started, is starting their drive on the nine-yard line. Wow. <laughs> yeah, those things happen. Well, David, uh, was this a situation, I guess, they were kicking an onside kick? This was a situation where UMS Wright took a 14-point lead and, and uh, Gulf Shores kind of tied it and tried to catch up? That's right. Okay. No, no, yeah, Gulf Shores was down seven. Uh, they, they never did tie it after the, the initial. When, when UMS went up 14-7, to seven, they were always up at least one score. They were up two scores at the half. But now Gulf Shores got the ball back down seven on uh, UMS's – 39-yard line, and had a chance to tie the game. There was a fourth down and seven and an incomplete pass. It could have been possibly a pass interference, uh, controversial call there. Uh, that, that And then UMS just had to take a knee because Gulf Shores was out of timeouts. I mean, it, it was one of those games where Gulf Shores was knocking on the door. And, and, and I would not be surprised, and we've seen this before, I would not be surprised to see these two teams meet again in the third round of the playoffs in 5A football. That would not surprise me in the least. Just two premier football teams. But well, It's going to be a lot of fun to watch coming down the stretch. David Jones joining us with the AHSAA Radio Network. David, thank you so much for the time, man. JJ, thanks, man. I'll see you guys soon. All right, UMS right, 35, Gulf Shores 28. A lot of storylines in this one. The legendary Terry Curtis, of course, head coach at UMS right, Mark Hudspeth. Former college head coach is now at Gulf Shores. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, it's Ronnie Royal. There's just a lot of great stories in this game. Yeah, and I'm sure there's no love loss between uh, UMS. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, they're a little too close together for comfort, right? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, again, David, thank you for uh, giving us a bird's eye on that one. What a what a great great game. Let's get back into some more scores. It is time for scores on the fours presented. By Wickedly Delicious Wiggles Pickles, Andy, 3A. Number one, Piedmont over Plainview, 34 to 21. It was number two, Mars Hill over Clements, 52 to 8. Number three, St. James over Greensboro, 41 to 5. Number four, Gordo took down midfield, 56 to to 13. Don't have a score yet on number five, Op and Providence Christian. At well, late in that game, it was 20 to 14, Op. That's the last score we had. Op late. Uh, number six, Mobile Christian over XL, 35 
to 14. Winfield, the number 17, was open this week. Number eight, Strawn took town no, a 2A, number four, Clark County, 35 to 21. It was number nine, Alabama Christian, falling to Trinity, Pres, uh, Trinity Presbyterian, uh, 20 to 14. And number 10, Houston Academy, over Ashford, 49. To 16. Other 3A scores, Daleville defeats New Brockton 34-24, Pike County over Northside Methodist 28-18, Walter Welburn over Beulah 62-7, it was Childersburg over Weaver 23-14, Dadeville defeats Sachs tonight 27-10, your final there, it was Randolph County 48, Raglan 24, Fayette County over Carbon Hill 59-8, Oakman over Tarrant 39-8, it was Geraldine over Hoax Bluff, 23-2. Sylvania defeats Ohatchee, 42-14. Vinemont over Brindley Mountain, 47-6. J.B. Pennington over Danville, 36-7. Susan Moore defeats Asbury, 66-0. Colbert County over Phil Campbell, 25-22. And Lauderdale County over Elkmont, 58-0. Scores on the fours is brought to you by Wickedly Delicious, Wickles Pickles. Hey, somebody opened a new stadium tonight in McAdory. We're going to talk about that next on the AHSAA Radio Network. The Alabama Slammer. Let's party. It's a popular drink at parties. But drink too many and you'll wind up in this Alabama Slammer. And if you drink and drive, get ready for a real Alabama Slammer. If you're involved in a crash where a driver's been drinking, you're four times more likely to die. Drive safe, Alabama. A message from your Alabama Department of Transportation. No, 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 wrong! Bring it in, guys! Take an E! Let's go over this again. Who starts off with a real Coke taste? Coca-Cola! And then Coca-Cola pitches the real Coke taste to who? Coca-Cola! How is Coca-Cola gonna give real Coke taste to itself? Take a lap, genius! Coca-Cola takes a snap and then pitches the real Coke taste to Coke Zero running up on the right. You got it? Yeah! yeah. Point we fake punt the real Coke taste. Who fakes the punt? Coke, uh, Coke, Coke Zero. zero. Oh. Take a lap, Coke Zero. Real Coke taste. Zero calorie. Main Street Family Urgent Care. Not long ago, when you or your family needed medical care, your options for treatments were limited. You could wait a week before seeing a doctor or shell out hundreds of dollars for an emergency room visit. At Main Street Family Care, we are committed to helping you heal better and feel better fast. Main Street Family Care works hard to make sure you don't have to leave town to take care of your health. Main Street Family Urgent Care. Heal better, feel better fast. Hello, my name is Dave Milton with Southeastern Land Group. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our company. We sell farmland and timberland in Alabama and the surrounding states. Not only do we have a land sales division, but we also have a timber sales division where we can help you with your timber sales and your timber appraisal. There's 22 of us in our group scattered throughout the southeastern United States. We are a full service land and timber sales company. We do with farmland, timberland, cattle property, poultry farms. 866-751-LAND. Go to the website, selandgroup.com. Life is a sequence of little successes. The story of my Southern Union success began the day I walked on campus. Making new friends, mastering a new skill, reaching a personal goal, the encore performance, the first date, the internship, and now, soon, the dream job. That's the story of my Southern Union success. Register for classes and get ready to watch your Southern Union story come to life. Russell DeWitt Center and Building Supply Stores have the tools and materials to get the job done right, whether you're a professional contractor or just a weekend do-it-yourselfer. With everyday customer conveniences like a drive through lumber yard, price match promise, and our best rewards program, each of our nine locations offer top brands and building materials like lumber, hardware, tools, paint, lawn and garden, and much more. Visit today and see what Russell DeWitt Center and Building Supply can help you build tomorrow. Welcome back to the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show. JJ and Andy with you. Uh, we had scheduled Seth Holloway from the cutoff news uh, up around the Pelham area. And we're and, cut um, off. And we're cut off. And we can't seem to reach uh, Seth. So hope if we hear from Seth during this segment, that'll be great. What I wanted to talk to him tonight, and, you know, we talked about this. 
there are a lot of teams that there were, you know, over 100 games played last night. People were a little concerned about the weather, Probably what might so. happen tonight. Well, at McAdory High School, they were opening a new stadium this week. Uh, so their new stadium was getting – and they were – because it was – the question was asked, are you going to move to Thursday? So we don't have it ready yet. You know, it's we're just going to get it ready in time for Friday. Uh, so now that but, is getting it right under the wire. I mean, it, it really is. But you know how it is. You're putting the last-minute touches. You're <laughs> – making sure everything's just like you want it in the new stadium. And, you know, you got plenty of peanuts in the concession stand. I don't know. Whatever is. Make, make sure it's 100, not 90. Yards, <laughs> they, huh? Right. Uh, but I, I can tell you that they did play a game, McAdory against Paul W. Bryant. And uh, McAdory gets a big win there, 46-19. So they opened the new stadium in style, which I'm sure Seth would have told us. He's also kind of our connection uh, for um, – uh, Ramsey and um, – oh, help me out here. Uh, kind of our connection for Ramsey and Pleasant Grove. Ah, uh, yes. And uh, and so I was looking forward to talking to him about that too if, he, if we had time. But uh, Ramsey gets that one 21-14. to 14. That would surprise me a little bit. You know, Pleasant Grove was a machine last year. And the thought of holding them to 14 points was just unthinkable. Um, and now they lost a lot of those playmakers off of that team. Uh, but – they were still highly thought of, ranked number two, still scoring a lot of points. Ramsey holds them to 14. He gets the win there. Um, that's going to shake up 5A just a little bit when number number two and number four go down. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Anytime you have that high of uh, ranked teams, uh, you kind of kind of turns things upside down there. Pleasant Grove, like you mentioned, I, they were playing for state championships in the last – In last year, uh, yeah. Several, yeah. Yeah, I played for a couple of few times, so – uh, but interestingly enough, there's a team that I was kind of have been keeping my eye on. Right, you kind of have those teams that you're watching. You go, I think they're I think they're better than their rating. Right, I, Gunnersville. Gunnersville. I'm watching Gunnersville sitting there at number five in five A. I think they're more like a two or three uh, in five A. I think Gunnersville. I think Gunnersville's got a great shot of coming out of the north there. You just got a feeling about it. Huh? It's just a feeling. <laughs> I just I watched what they did. With your failings, I watched right? what they did last year, and then I watch. I've been watching what they do this year, and it's one of those teams that uh, I didn't think they could overcome Pleasant Grove last year. Uh, I think they can this year. I think they're like I said. I don't think they're the number five team in five A. I would have them two or three, uh, but that's just me. And of course, Leeds is up there too, and Leeds is uh, back to destroying people as the Green Wave's been known to do. So. Coming up here in just a few minutes, we'll talk with Mickey Shadricks. He is the play-by-play voice for the AHSAA TV network, WOTM-TV Game of the Week, uh, that happened last night. So we'll get his thoughts on that Thursday night game. And uh, we'll have our recruiting segment, but without our recruiting analyst. And um, A good reason. A good reason. Uh, John Garcia, Jr., Sports Illustrated, SI.com, SIAllAmerican.com. He has been the recruiting analyst on this show for like eight years now. I think I think when we started, he was still in high school. Yeah. Uh, now he's working for Sports Illustrated, d- director of football recruiting or whatever he is. Uh, but John Garcia Jr., uh, his wife gave birth to their first child yesterday morning. And congratulations so, to him. Congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Garcia. And we'll look forward to a, uh, uh, a highly recruited strong safety in the class of 20. I don't know what that right? kid does, but he will be well informed when it comes to high school. <laughs> he sports. will be well informed when it comes to high school football and recruiting, no doubt. And later on, we're going to talk to Caleb Brooks. Big win tonight, region win for the Daveville Tigers over Sacks. Uh, big game there, so we'll talk about that one coming up a little bit later on. And maybe my favorite spotlight interview we've ever done is a, a, a gentleman named Ralph Lee, who lives, as he tells me, between Tallahassee and Notasolga. He played football at Realtown from 1959 to 1962. Wow. He has been to every – He has been to every Realtown football game since 1972. He is six games away from his 600th consecutive Realtown football game. I can't wait. That's coming up later. That's going to be a lot of – trust me, that's going to be a lot of fun. Let's get to scores on the fours presented by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles. Andy, you got two, eh? Number one, Fife takes down Whitesburg Christian, 49-6. to six. Number two, Highland Home over number six, Lynette, 28-18. to 18. Number three, G.W. Long falls to number five, Ariton, 34-18. to 18. Number four, Clark County 
falls to number to three a number eight strong thirty five to twenty one number five number six Lynette uh, eighteen number two Highland Home twenty eight number seven Pisgah over Collinsville forty to twenty eight number eight J U Blackshear twenty Chickasaw forty number nine BB Comer over Ranburn thirty two to seven and number ten Aliceville over Francis Marion. 56 to 0. And other 2A scores St. Luke's over Washington County, 27 to nothing. Wicksburg over Cottonwood, 28 to 8. Albertville over Geneva County, 24 to 8. Zion Chapel over Samson, 19 to 6. It was Real Town over Goshen, 42 to 22. Luverne over Horseshoe Bend, 12 to nothing. Isabella over Central Coosa, 65 to nothing. Vincent over Fayetteville, 53 to nothing. Thorsby over Woodland, 42 to 6. Lamar County over Cold Springs, 38 to 28. Seligen over Winston County, 12 to 8. Tuscaloosa Academy over Greene County, 26 16. Cleveland over Locust Fork, 46 25. Pleasant Valley over Holly Pond, 48 19. Southeastern over West End, 21 to 14. North Sand Mountain over Eider, 42 to 18. Sand Rock over Section, 35 6. Hatton over Tarptown, 52 0. Red Bay over Sheffield, 50 to 39. And Tanner over Fogville, 27 to 20. Thursday night recap on the game of the week is coming up next on the AHSAA Radio Network. The heat is on, and nowhere gives you more than KiaOfAuburn.com. First, we give you more for your trade-in. Just scan the code to find out how much. Next, the all-new Kia Sportage is here, and you'll be ready for anything. Then, at KiaOfAuburn.com, you can custom order your new Kia just the way you want. Want more? Check out our selection of certified pre-owned Kias with 165-point inspection, complete protection plans, and so much more. Selection, price, trade-in value. You always get it all at Kia of Auburn. Kia of Auburn, where you're always number one. Hey guys, this is Tyler Reynolds from Reynolds Outdoors. The seasons change and so do our product offerings. We are happy to announce that we are now a full line archery dealer with popular brand names like Matthews, Bowtech, PSC, and a full line of accessories to go with them. We still have our great selection of firearms, ammo, apparel, and more to get you ready for the season. And did you know we have the biggest selection of box blinds in Alabama? We have everything you need for a successful fall in the woods. Y'all come see us at Reynolds Outdoors on Geneva Street in Opelika or check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Looking for an attorney you can trust for your real estate closings? Wisdom Law Firm at Lake Martin has you covered. Your real estate transactions are fast, convenient, and professional every step of the way. Wisdom Law is certified and licensed by the American Land and Title Association and approved by all local lenders. Visit Wisdom Law Firm at 6366 Highway 49 in Dadeville or at their Auburn location at 2353 Bent Creek Road. No communication concerning a lawyer's legal services shall be published or broadcast unless it contains the following language, which shall be clearly legible or audible as the case may be. No representation is made that the quality of legal services to be performed is Greater than the quality of legal services performed by other lawyers. When you need an automotive hero, you got to call SNS Discount Tire Pros. With locations in Alexander City and Davil, we are here to serve you today. From quick services like oil changes and tire rotations to in depth automotive repair such as suspensions, brakes, and tune ups, SNS can take care of all your tire needs. You just have to focus on what's important and love the drive. Call SNS Discount Tire Pros today. We are automotive heroes and we are here to serve you. Dable is home to Lake Martin Community Hospital and Lake Martin Family Medicine, both a division of Ivy Creek Healthcare. With great physicians, nurse practitioners, and nurses who provide extraordinary compassionate care for Dable and surrounding Lake Martin areas. Medicaid, Medicare, and most private insurances are welcome. For your home health and hospice needs, you may also use Ivy Creek Home Health and Ivy Creek Hospice. Ivy Creek, always providing quality care in the communities our patients call home. Hey, this is Doug Roberts, long-term resident of Alexander City. I sold my house with Century 21 Lake Area Realty because all my life I had heard that to sell a house, you need three things, location, location, location. I found out there's actually four. You need location, 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 and Rhonda Gaskins at Century 21 Lake Area Realty to sell your house fast. Call me today and let me go to work for you. 256-749-3644. And Mickey Shadrick's play-by-play voice for the AHSAA TV Network WOTM TV Game of the Week joins us now to talk about uh, his game last night, Valley all over Sylacauga, 46 
to 14. Mickey, how are you this week, my friend? Doing great. How about you? You know, we have this AHSAA TV Network Game of the Week on Thursday nights, and everybody must have got jealous because it looks like everybody around the state wanted to move to Thursday this week. Yeah, I think a lot of people were trying to, to, to beat the weather, but hopefully it won't be, a, won't be as bad as maybe expected earlier in the week for the teams that are playing uh, tonight. Absolutely. Let's talk about your game last night. I want to start uh, with uh, Silicaga. Uh, the, this is a this is a team that is struggling this year. Uh, they're winless so far. Valley gets the win, forty six to fourteen. Uh, Silicaga is it is it is it a young team? Is it a thin team? What are you seeing there? Well, I, I, I think you definitely have to acknowledge that they are a younger team. I mean, most most of the key players that performed for them last night were were juniors and sophomores. I mean, they they played several different kids at quarterback, and the most productive kid was uh, was just a junior, and then their best running back was a sophomore. So yeah, you look up and down the roster, they are a young team, but uh, it, it's not your typical uh, Silicaga team. You know that program is is solid. They they're a factor year in and year out. Great football tradition, but uh, they definitely are, are off to a rough start, and it doesn't get any easier for them. I mean, their schedule is is tough the rest of the way, so this it's going to be a challenging year for the Aggies. No, no question. They've got a tough schedule the rest of the way. Let's talk about the team on the other side, the Valley Rams. Uh, we watched them uh, get a win over a, a lower classification but powerful Lynette team earlier in the season. What are you seeing out of this Valley team? Well, I see a lot of potential. I think Coach Rose and I both, after the game was over, we kind of looked at each other and said, hey, this this Valley team you know, could kind of go either way, but I think see a lot of upside i mean they've got one of the best athletes in the state at quarterback in this cam dooley kid and he's just a junior and he he was very effective last night he had two rushing touchdowns through through to two touchdown passes had an interception right before halftime so he is a he's a dynamic player he's about 6'3 190 a really good looking kid and uh when you've got somebody like that at, at a key position such as quarterback uh, you can do a lot of things. And then you look at their front seven on defense. They've got really good size up front. They've got a really good nose card, a nose, nose tackle who, was, who can play up and down the line. They've got really good active linebackers that can run side to side. Uh, that, they, they're, they've got some players. And uh, they, you know, their record wasn't that good going into the game last night. But as you mentioned, they uh, – they had a big win over Lynette that barely lost to Hanley, lost to Beauregard, which appears to be a very good team this year. So I, I, I would think that there's a lot of upside to this Valley team this year. You know, it's interesting. You mentioned uh, Valley with a, a terrific athlete at quarterback. You see that more and more. And uh, the quarterback's always been the position on a football team. But, uh, you know, we saw it as starting about 20 years ago in the NFL when quarterback became the, the focal point. Then it filters down into the college level, and now elite quarterback play is the thing that everybody looks at and is looking for. And now uh, over the last five to ten years, filtering down into high school where uh, you've, you've just about, to compete at a high level, got to have elite quarterback play. Yeah, and when you've got a kid like Valley does in Cam Dooley, he elevates uh, – their productivity on the offensive side because he he uh, he's got good size he's got uh, obviously good speed very elusive he's got a really good arm as, as if you watched the game last night you saw he's a very very good passer and again just a junior so uh, they uh, you know as goes Cam Dooley I think so goes Valley as as an offense but. Again, they've got some really good players, some really good athletes on defense. That's why uh, I, I think there's a lot of upside for them as the season goes on, goes along. And their coach told us after the game they obviously got a lot of things to improve on, which every coach would say that. But uh, the, the, the players are there. I think the, the athletes are there at all the various positions. So uh, Valley will be an uh, interesting team to watch as the season moves on. We'll catch up with you next week, partner. Have a great one. Sounds good. Thank you. And let's get into another edition of Scores on the Fours. Right now, it's presented by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles. Andy, 1A. 42-35. to 35. It was number two, Leroy over Choctaw County, 33 to nothing. Number four, Linden and Marengo still looking for a score there. Number five, Sweetwater over R.C. Hatch, 47 to 14, Valley Head, the number six team, 
had an open week this week. Number seven, Pickens County over Barry, 62 to nothing. Number eight, Spring Garden over Victory Christian, 42 to 14. Number nine, Meek, nothing meek about them. Num- over 3A, Colbert Heights, 24 to 17. Number 10, Decatur Heritage falls to Coosa Christian, 35 to 21. All right, another 1A scores. We've got Millery over Fruitdale, 38 to nothing. Florala over Southern Choctaw, 38 to 20. Georgiana over Kinston, 30 to 20. It was Pleasant Home, 25. McKenzie, 20. Verbena over Billingsley, 54 to 14. Otagaville over Calhoun, 36 to nothing. It was Lochapoco over Central Hainville, 48 to 12. Maplesville over Nova Sulga, 54 to 6. Lynn over Summerton Christian, 37 to nothing. Marion County over Holy Spirit Catholic, 52 to nothing. It was South Lamar over Hubbardville, 35 20. Wadley over Donahoe, 44 to 12. Winterboro over Talladega County Central, 45 to 8. Galesville over Cedar Bluff, or I'm sorry, Cedar Bluff over Galesville, 29-28. Appalachian over Woodville, 48-8. Addison over Hackleburg, 26-14. Phillips over Cherokee, 50-14. And Shoals Christian over Vina, 44-16. We'll come back with more on the AHSAA Radio Network. Scores on the Fours is presented by Wickedly Delicious, Wickles Pickles. Serving East Central Alabama since 2005, we are Coosa Valley Respiratory and Home Medical of Sylacauga. Coosa Valley Respiratory has medical equipment and supplies, including oxygen to home ventilation services. We carry a full line of bracing, power chairs, scooters, and more. And when you trust Coosa Valley Respiratory, you are dealing with local people that care about your well-being. Providing quality home care for our community, Coosa Valley Respiratory and Home Medical, 201 West Fort Williams, Sylacauga. Give us a call at 256-245-1411. Hillaby Towers is an affordable senior citizens community located in Alexander City on Highway 22 East. Spacious one bedrooms are available now. Great location, peaceful setting, comfortable living where pets are allowed and utilities are included. Call today to find out more information on Alexander City's best kept secret, 256-329-0552. That's Hillaby Towers in Alexander City. Sky. The toughest name in lawnmowers. Unmatched quality and performance for over three decades. The clear choice. The best mower money can buy for work or at home. Top lawn care professionals and discerning homeowners know that Skag means productivity and reliability. Every Skag mower is proudly built right here in the USA. Don't settle for anything less than simply the best. Skag. Satterfield Outdoor Living on Highway 280 in Alex City. You want the best opportunity to be successful in life. You deserve that opportunity. Well, you just happens to be in our motto, central to you, central to your success. Your future is right now. Don't wait. Make your dreams a reality by enrolling at Central Alabama Community College. Register today at CACC.edu. The all-new Triple R Cafe in Rockford is open and the place for true Southern-style cooking. Open Tuesday through Saturday in downtown Rockford on US 231. The Triple R Cafe serves up true Southern cooking with a meat and three for lunch. And on Friday and Saturday, get the best dinners in the area with fresh from the garden vegetables. Guff-style scallops and shrimp and bayou-style alligator. Central Alabama's new place for Southern-style cooking with a down-home atmosphere. That's the all-new Triple R Cafe in downtown Rockford. It's back to school time, football season, and time to get ready for the holidays. How about a brand new Chevrolet Buick or GMC with no payments till next year? New Chevy Malibus as low as $349 a month. New Buicks take $3,000 off any model. New GMC Terrains as low as $399 a month, all with no payments till 2023. Get 0% financing, no payments till 2023 at Glenn Smith and Opelika. Get ready to smile. Welcome back to the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show. JJ and Andy with you as we have crossed into the 11 o'clock hour tonight. And we uh, we didn't miss out on him entirely. We missed him earlier, but we do have 
Uh, Seth Holloway of the Cutoff News covering West Jefferson County football uh, over there. And I know um, we talked about this earlier, Seth, Andy, and I did, but McAdory was able to open their new stadium with a win tonight. So that's always it's always good when you open a new stadium, right? Oh, yeah, 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 49-19. to 19. Uh, Yeah, McAdory looks like the real deal this year. They, they look pretty good. Uh, this is the first time, well, second time I get to see them. Uh, I saw them last week when they played Bessemer, but uh, they're – They've got some good young uh, weapons uh, at disposal, and I think they're going to be a force to be reckoned with this year and next year. Um, I went to the Hewtown Hillcrest game last night, and Hillcrest looks pretty strong too. My, I, I don't want to say any predictions because some people will get mad at me in this area, but I think it's going to come down to Hillcrest and Hewtown for this region over here. I'm uh, not Hillcrest and Hewtown, but Hillcrest and McAdory for this region over here. And because Hillcrest and McAdory play the, their last regional game against each other. We had uh, Pleasant Grove and Ramsey in 5A tonight. And uh, you and I talked a lot about Pleasant Grove last year as they made their big run. Uh, they get beat tonight 21-14. to 14. It's hard for me to imagine Pleasant Grove being held to 14 points, Seth. Actually, the game was last night. It wasn't tonight. It was last yeah, night. Yeah, last night, yeah. Yes, but yeah, Pleasant Grove. It was that was kind of a shocker to me. I knew Ramsey was strong going in there. Um, I got to see Pleasant Grove at the first uh, the first week of the season against Paul Bryant and uh, Hamley, their new quarterback over there, looked really good. Um, I wasn't at that game, but I I, I talked to uh, my reporter that was out there, and uh, she said that it was the the Ramsey defense was just very strong and was able to contain Hamley and, and, and his receivers. And um, as normally, Ham, I don't know if you know their new quarterback over there at Pleasant Grove is, uh, uh, I forgot his last, first name, his last name is Hamley. He's Coach Keon Hamley that used to be at Fairfield. It's his son that uh, Coach Hamley transferred from Fairfield over to Pleasant Grove as a coach, and he's playing, and his son is playing over there now as a quarterback. And, um, yeah, I, I was kind of shocked by that. You know, Ramsey, that Ramsey-Pleasant Grove game is always a, a determining factor, you know, in that 5A hunt for that championship game. And I'm sure they will probably meet in the playoffs somewhere, if not in the, in the, in the semifinal uh, game. Seth, any uh, games on the horizon in the area that uh, you're looking forward to? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to the uh, Bessemer Hueytown game next week. Um, that's that's always a good rival game. Um, some of the sleepers that I think might shock some people in the area over here this year, Oak Grove looks really strong this year. They're coming off their their win this past week, um, and Brookwood is kind of coming on. Brookwood is three and one, um, and I don't think they've had a three and one season at Brookwood in a long time. Um, they're, they're looking pretty, pretty strong too. So, you know, um, it's always, it's always an up and down with, with football in this area. You know, it's, uh, Hewtown one year, McAdory the next year, Bessemer City the next year. Um, but I think it's going to be McAdory's year this year. We'll see how Hewtown can bounce back off this loss from Hillcrest. Um, but like I said, the sleepers that, that are kind of coming along, the programs that are coming up strong. Are, are, are Oak Grove and Brookwood, and Oak Grove hasn't had a winning season. Oh, I've been covering you know, sports out here for 12 years now, and I don't think I've ever seen Oak Grove have a winning season yet. Wow. And it looks like they might this season. You know, I mean, I, it's a little bit still young to predict, but they're looking pretty strong. Seth Holloway is joining us from the Cutoff News covering West Jefferson County football. Seth, thank you so much for the time, man. No problem. Sorry I was late this night. Uh, I got stuck at the McAdory. Uh, the stadium looks beautiful. And by the way, Huey Town Stadium looks beautiful too. Absolutely. Yep. Have a great night, man. Seth Holloway, thecutoffnews.com. You can check out his reporting there. Uh, does a great job covering that West Jefferson area. Uh, he's kind of our go to in that area of Birmingham. Right now, we got more scores we got to get to. It is time for Scores on the Fours, presented by Wickedly Delicious Wickle Pickle. Did you do that already, right? Let's get into the AISA, Andy. Number one, Ataga, 35 to 10 over Fort Dale. Number two, Patrician and Pickens still looking for a score. Their number three, Macon East over Hooper. Hoopa, 35 to 18. Number four, Jackson over South Choctaw, 44 to nothing. 
Number five, Lee Scott over Morgan, 48 to six. Number six, Glenwood over Bessemer, 34 to seven. Number seven, Lowndes over Southern, 42 to 18. Number eight, Crenshaw County falls to the number 10 team, Chambers, 38 to six. Number nine, Clark Prep over Snook in a high scoring affair, 74 to 30. Wow, okay. All right, we had uh, Lakeside over Coosa Valley, 43 to 11. Wilcox over Sparta. Wildcats get a win tonight. It was Banks over Escambia, 23 to 12. Monroe over Valiant, 14 to 6. Evangel over North River, 50 to 8. And Springwood over Meadowview, 60 to 8. Scores on the fours presented by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles. We'll come back. We'll talk a little 3A region football with Dadeville and Sachs. Big game tonight. Caleb Brooks of WAXC TV joins us next on the AHSAA Radio Network. Now, another edition of This Week in the AHSAA. News and notes from around Alabama high school athletics. The Alabama High School Athletic Association is saddened to announce that retired AHSAA Director of Officials Greg Brewer, 66 years old, has passed away. He died Friday, September 2nd at Jackson's Hospital following a brief illness. Brewer, a native of Florence, graduated Bradshaw High School, the University of Alabama, and earned a master's degree from the University of Alabama. He joined the AHSAA as an assistant director in 1985, becoming director of officials in 1988. As director of officials, Brewer served on various NFHS rules committees, including baseball, football. He developed the AHSAA district director program, the AHSAA pitch count rule for baseball, which is lauded as one of the nation's best, and a high school officiating course now being used by member schools. And that's this week in the AHSAA, brought to you by Jacksonville State University on the AHSAA Radio Network. Hey, it's Brett Pritchard, and I'm here to tell you all about Sims Foods, who you know better as Wickles Pickles. Wickles Pickles, that 90-year-old recipe, wickedly delicious, relish, okra, and pickles. From Saturday sandwiches, tailgate snacks, to holiday dinners with your family and friends. From their family to yours, Wickles Pickles, those wickedly delicious pickles. Wickles Pickles, wickedly delicious pickles. Main Street Family Urgent Care. Not long ago, when you or your family needed medical care, your options for treatments were limited. You could wait a week before seeing a doctor or shell out hundreds of dollars for an emergency room visit. At Main Street Family Care, we are committed to helping you heal better and feel better fast. Main Street Family Care works hard to make sure you don't have to leave town to take care of your health. Main Street Family Urgent Care. Heal better, feel better fast. Encore Sports Medicine. Hey, honey, it's Mom. Just wanted to call and check in, see how everything's going. You'll probably say not to worry. Everything is great. But we just, we miss you. I'll call you back later. Everything's great. I love it here. Welcome back to the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show. JJ and Andy with you on this Friday night as we bounce around the state, take a look at some of the great region games that went on tonight. Uh, and joining us now on the Southeastern Land Group Hotline is Caleb Brooks, WAXC TV3 broadcast team for the Dadeville Tigers. Big game tonight, uh, region game against Sachs, Caleb. And I, I, I followed this game a little bit. Seemed like Dadeville had kind of a slow start, uh, had a little trouble getting getting going in that game. And once they did, they kind of took the game over there in the second half. Yeah, it was a slow start offensively for sure. Uh, both teams kind of got off to a slow start on offense. And for Dable, they got the ball on the 
25 yard line of sacks to start the game and came out throwing. And uh, you don't see Dave will throw the ball a ton. They line up in the eye formation, some single back look. They like to run the football. And it's not a knock on the play calling or anything. I think they had to come out and throw because they struggled to block them up front. But it's almost like them throwing to start the game kind of almost just threw things out of whack, and it took them a while to kind of get going. Uh, but once they did, they got down 10-0. to zero. Uh, Sack set up a perfect screenplay uh, and ended up scoring from about 20 yards out. Went up 10-0. to zero. They squib kicked with about a minute 15 till halftime. And Dable picked it up, ran it to the 50, immediately threw a deep ball and hit a deep ball uh, to – Phil Dowdell, who got down inside the five, and then Dable was able to capitalize. And they used that momentum, carried it over in the second half, and really just took control of the football game. It was 13-10 to 10 going into the fourth quarter, but uh, Avante Wilson got a strip, uh, a strip tackle for loss and took it for a touchdown. Uh, and then Dable ended up making a drive down the field, scoring with about uh, a minute and 30 to go to make it 27-10. to 10. So uh, the score – doesn't show how close the game was. It was a close football game. It was a fourth quarter football game. But Dable was really able to take control of the football game and, and uh, really kind of started pushing sacks around towards the end. And Dable just has so many weapons on offense, so many different guys. They've got, got, I mean, they're about five deep at running back. They've got Phil Dowdell and uh, Antoine Woody on the outside that they can use as well. And uh, they just have so many different guys. And then Jordan Rambo also provides a lot at the quarterback position, being able to run the football and throw the football. So uh, it it was a really big win for Dable tonight, and it puts them in control of that region now. Caleb, yeah, I got some friends over in Dable, and they keep telling me, uh, you know, this team's a lot different than it has been in the last couple of years. They got a lot, like you mentioned, uh, they just got a lot of athletes. And I guess you scored 27 unanswered points. That pretty much kind of sums up that, uh, tells the story. No, it does. I mean, you look back at their first game against B.B. Comer, uh, and they got down 21-14 to 14 and scored 34 unanswered in that one, and then they jumped out to a 39-0 to 0 lead against Weaver this past week. So they scored 73 unanswered after getting down 21-14 to 14 to B.B. Comer first game of the year, and then the Knights scored 27 unanswered uh, against a really good SAC team. I mean, SAC was big. They were bigger than Dayful. Uh, on the defensive and offensive lines. They had some really good-looking linebackers. Uh, but ultimately, Dable just was able to use their athletes. And uh, Sachs was not as deep as Dable. They don't have as many players. I'd say Dable probably had about maybe 20 more players than Sachs did, and I think that made a little bit of a difference tonight. You could tell Sachs started to kind of get worn down towards the end of the football game. You know, we got used to, and then this show now in its 11th year, we got used to when this show first started, Dable – Playoffs every year, it's, you know, uh, challenging for titles every year. Um, it seems like the, the folks in Davil kind of feel like things are headed back in that direction. They definitely are right now. you got to give Roger McDonald a, a lot of credit for what he's done there. Uh, they've got some really good athletes. You know, um, we got to see them a lot in basketball this past year, and they went all the way to the Elite Eight in basketball, and a lot of those guys that were – Big key pieces on that team, Daquan Doss, Phil Dowdell, Antoine Woody, Avante Wilson. Avante Wilson is a Division One linebacker for Dayful, and uh, he's got some, some offers from Western Kentucky and UAB and places like that. And uh, tonight was his first game back. He had missed the first two games of the year due to an injury, and uh, he, was a, a, he made his presence known, uh, as I mentioned, with the strip sack fumble and uh, or, or the strip fumble and was able to take it for a touchdown. And, uh, you know, making that big of an impact in his first game, he's just going to continue to get better. He was going with some cramping issues towards the end. Uh, and so they just got some, some really good talent on this team. They got Jay Burns. He's a sophomore uh, who plays middle linebacker and also some running back and uh, provides a lot for them being able to – he also lines up at fullback at times and blocks. Uh, and and they just – there's five guys that can they can give the ball to at any point, and they just find who's hot. And they put it in his hands, and tonight that was Ivory Rigby as he scored two touchdowns. And uh, they got a sophomore, Brandez Ethan, who uh, his first touch tonight goes 45 yards for a touchdown. So they've just got weapons, and, and they just they run it, and they, they lean on you. And as the game goes on, uh, especially at the 3A level where there's not as much depth and guys have to play both ways, uh, it's hard to take that off 48 minutes in the football game. 
Caleb Brooks, WAXC TV3 with the broadcast team for the Naval Tigers. Thanks so much for the time, man. Let's get to scores on the fours. Brought to you by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles. Andy, 7A Top 10, one more again. Absolutely. Number one, Central Phoenix City falls to number seven. Opelika, 17 to 14. Number one goes down. Number two, Auburn over Jeff Davis, 31 to nothing. Number three, Fairhope over Mary Montgomery, 38 to 23. Number four, Hoover over Vestavia Hills, 20 to 14. Number five, Hewitt Trustful over number 10, Tuscaloosa County, 35 to seven. Number six, Thompson over Spain Park, 35 to 14. Number eight, Bob Jones over Grissom, 33 to nothing. It was number nine, Enterprise over Smith Station, 58 to 14. 6A, number one, Clay Chalkville is a winner tonight over number six, Pinson Valley. Very uh, interesting and heavily watched game there, 14 to 12. Number two, Mountain Brook all over Woodlawn, 56 to six. Number three, Sarah Land defeats Spanish Fort, 35 24. Number four, Hillcrest Tuscaloosa over Hueytown, 54 44. Number five, Theodore over Baldwin County, 35 nothing. It was number seven, Briarwood, 34. Pelham, 35. Pelham with the big win there. Uh, number eight, Gardendale had the week off. Number nine, Hartzell, 63. Columbia, six. And that is Scores on the Fours, brought to you by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles. Coming up, our spotlight segment, Real Town Superfan Ralph Lee. You're going to want to hear this. It's up next on the AHSAA Radio Network. Concrete Basement and Walls, LLC, 205-229-0234. Call owner Eric McKenzie now to get your free quote now. 205-229-0234. Concrete Basement and Walls, LLC. Hi, I'm Scott Blake. I'm Angie Richardson, and we are the loan team here at Movement Mortgage. Whether you're a first-time home buyer or you've gone through the process before, our mission is to help you move forward with the purchase of your future plans. Call me at 256-397-2771. Or call me at 256-794-1003. Scott Blake, NMLS number 527945. Angie Richardson, NMLS number 216556. Movement Mortgage supports equal housing opportunity. NMLS number 39179. For licensing information, please visit nmlsconsumeraccess.com. Lionville Health and Rehab in Lionville, Alabama has a staff and has had a staff of caring folks for years. If it has come that time in life for that person in your family to look at the possibility of going into a health and rehab facility, you have a choice. You have a choice to choose and the fine folks at Lionville Health and Rehab would like to take this time to invite you by to meet them and them you. Caring folks that care for you and your family. You have a choice. The number to call is 256-396-2104. When visiting Mission Thrift in Auburn, you'll always find a wide selection of items at great prices. Mission Thrift carries your favorite name brand clothing like Patagonia, Free People, Lily Pulitzer, and so many more, along with antique pieces and a variety of household items. Every week, Mission Thrift introduces fresh items to the floor, truly giving you a treasure hunt experience. If you're looking for a true unique thrift experience head to auburn and visit lifesavers mission thrift located on east university behind zaxby's in auburn all donations are tax deductible and benefit a charity the alex city parks and rec department serves the residents of alexander city with quality facilities and programs designed to positively affect the lives of the citizens from youth sports programs to adult activities and our senior center the alex city parks and rec offers services for all ages the cooper rec center lake winds golf course and the senior activity center are just some of the great features the alex city parks and rec department provides for the people of alex city for more information on any of our programs call 256-329-6736 Brew Baker, it's a brand new day. Go, Brew Baker, go. So come on down and drive away. Go, Brew Baker, go. From our dealership to your driveway. Go, Brew Baker, go. Brew Baker's gonna make your day. Save some time and shop online anytime at brewbaker.com. It's better at brewbaker.com. Concrete Basement and Walls, LLC, 205-229-0234. Call owner Eric McKenzie now to get your free quote now. 205-229-0234. Concrete Basement and Walls, LLC.
it is time now for our AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show Spotlight Interview. Brought to you by Southeastern Land Group. Whether you're buying or selling rural land in the Southeast, Southeastern Land Group is the place to start. Visit selandgroup.com. Nothing makes high school football as special as the fans who come out to support the kids every Friday night. Everybody knows that, and uh, we have great crowds really all over the state. Uh, Tonight, we wanted to take a little minute to feature one really special fan. Uh, You might call him a super fan. It's Mr. Ralph Lee. He has been to 594 consecutive Realtown High School football games. He actually played at Realtown uh, many years ago and has continued to follow the game, uh, the team, since the early 70s. So we wanted to talk to him a little bit, get the fans' perspective on Realtown football because the game's not the same without him. And joining us right now is Mr. Ralph Lee, uh, a real town fan and uh, the, who is on a quest to get to 600 consecutive real town games. Mr. Lee, how you doing today, sir? I'm doing just great. Good well, Lord, let me get up this morning. I hear you. Now, do you live in Tallahassee or, or where where are you located? I live in between Tallahassee and Nova Sugar. Okay. That's about Six miles from notes up in real town. Okay. Now I was in talking to some people before I gave you a call. I was, uh, I was told that you actually played ball at real town. When was that in the sixties? Uh, 59 to 64. Okay. 59 to 64. Wow. What position did you play? Uh, guard center and linebacker. Okay. Now this quest to get to 600, uh, the real town games, obviously that, takes a little bit of time how long how long has this been going on since 72 <laughs> okay that's i'm I, a football fanatic <laughs> i love like football it. and obviously uh real town football has been a big part of your life what are what are some <laughs> of your fondest memories of real town football uh the first state championship game in 87 when we beat winston county nine to seven okay that was a defensive we, game, huh? Yes, sir, a defense game. As of last year, our legislator coach, Coach Webster, retired after that win. Okay. Wow. And, uh, of course, you had all those years with the great Jackie O'Neill down there uh, getting right. things done at Realtown, too. I mean, that had to have been a special time. It was. And my son played for Realtown, and now he's coaching at Realtown, too. Okay. All right. This is his 27th year up there. Wow. So he's been there a while too. So do yes, you sir. make it to how difficult is it? I mean, to make that commitment because you're going to home games and road games and everywhere. It's been kind of hard sometimes, and my wife went with me most of the time until she come down with brain cancer and she she missed a lot of ball games. But mm-hmm. uh, my wife wouldn't let me stay at home with her. She told me to go to the ball game. My sister stayed with her when I went to the ball games. But it wasn't the same without her. Yes, sir. I can imagine it wasn't. And bless your heart, that is quite a statement there. It's an amazing streak. And when you factor in all the things, as as Mr. Lee mentioned, that can happen to you just in the regular course of life, uh, making it there every every weekend for football games, really something else. We're going to come back and continue our spotlight interview with Ralph Lee, Real Town Superfan. It's next on the AHSAA Radio Network. Radio. All right, Scores on the Fours is presented by Wickedly Delicious Wiggles Pickles. Andy, let's run down that 5A top 10 again. Number one, UMS Wright over Gulf Shores, the number four team in 5A, 35 to 28. It was number two, Pleasant Grove, falling to number six, Ramsey, 21 to 14. Number three, Leeds over St. Clair County, 52 to 13. Number five, Gunnersville over Douglas, 40 to 6. Number seven, our number six, Ramsey, 21, number two, Pleasant Grove, 14. It was number seven, Moody over Cleveland County, 62 to seven. Number eight, Viger takes down Williamson, 24 to nothing. Number nine, Eufaula all over Greenville, 43 to seven. And number 10, Arab, 42 to nothing over Sardis. In 4A, which I think is going to be one of the most entertaining uh, classifications to watch as we come down the stretch. Number one, Montgomery Catholic, 58-0 over Slocum. Number two, Hanley, 48-0 over White Plains. 
Number three, Andalusia, 50 to nine over Bullock County. Number four, Northside, goes on the road to Curry and wins 40 to nothing. Number five, Oniana, great game against number eight, Cherokee County. Oniana gets the win, 17-14. Number six, Anderson with a 30 to 23 win over number seven, Jacksonville. Number nine, Montgomery Academy, 30, Dale County, 13. And number 10, Orange Beach, 37 to 12 over Satsuma. Scores on the fours brought to you by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles. When we come back, we'll have the second half of our interview with Ralph Lee, who is six weeks away from attending 600 consecutive Real Town football games. That's coming up on the AHSAA Radio Network. Hello, my name is Dave Milton with Southeastern Land Group. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our company. We sell farmland and timberland in Alabama and the surrounding states. Not only do we have a land sales division, but we also have a timber sales division where we can help you with your timber sales and your timber appraisal. There's 22 of us in our group scattered throughout the southeastern United States. We are a full service land and timber sales company. We do with farmland, timberland, cattle property, poultry farms. 866-751-LAND. Go to the website, selandgroup.com. Hey, it's Brett Pritchard, and I'm here to tell you all about Sims Foods, who you know better as Wickles Pickles. Wickles Pickles, that 90-year-old recipe, wickedly delicious, relish, okra, and pickles. From Saturday sandwiches, tailgate snacks, to holiday dinners with your family and friends. From their family to yours, Wickles Pickles, those wickedly delicious pickles. Wickles Pickles, wickedly delicious pickles. Hi, John. You have messages. Not now, phone. I'm driving. You know you want to text your friends. Texting and driving is illegal. No distractions, period. People die that way. Eating, putting on makeup. Scroll through your music? Nope. Your girlfriend just texted. She's bored. Sorry. Not worth dying for. Good call. She seems a little clingy. Don't text your life goodbye. Drive safe, Alabama. A message from your Alabama Department of Transportation. Life is a sequence of little successes. The story of my Southern Union success began the day I walked on campus. Making new friends, mastering a new skill, reaching a personal goal, the encore performance, the first date, the internship, and now, soon, the dream job. That's the story of my Southern Union success. Register for classes and get ready to watch your Southern Union story come to life. Alabama Power first generated hydro energy in 1914 at Lay Dam, harnessing the power of water to bring electricity to our state. Today, more than a century later, Lay Dam is one of 14 Alabama Power hydro plants that provides Alabamians clean, reliable, affordable energy with zero emissions. And it's one more way we're helping elevate Alabama. Main Street Family Urgent Care Not long ago, when you or your family needed medical care, your options for treatments were limited. You could wait a week before seeing a doctor or shell out hundreds of dollars for an emergency room visit. At Main Street Family Care, we are committed to helping you heal better and feel better fast. Main Street Family Care works hard to make sure you don't have to leave town to take care of your health. Main Street Family Urgent Care Heal better, feel better taste of the South starts out here. However you roll into work, you can bring the flavor with Jack's Breakfast Catering. Huge scratch-made buttermilk biscuits and hearty breakfast sandwiches, mixed or matched, starting at just $15. Don't forget to add delicious fresh ground Royal Cup coffee and classic breakfast sides, because great work starts with great breakfast. Breakfast Catering, starting at $15 from Jack's. All about the South. Russell DeWitt Center and Building Supply Stores have the tools and materials to get the job done right, whether you're a professional contractor or just a weekend do-it-yourselfer. With everyday customer conveniences like a drive through lumber yard, price match promise, and our best rewards program, each of our nine locations offer top brands and building materials like lumber, hardware, tools, paint, lawn and garden, and much more. Visit today and see what Russell DeWitt Center and Building Supply can help you build tomorrow.
Welcome back to the Spotlight Interview. We're talking with Mr. Ralph Lee, Realtown football fan who is now just six games away from making it to 600 consecutive Realtown Rebel games, a streak that dates back into the early 70s. We have, uh, we have no doubt in our mind that you'll, uh, that you'll make it there. Tell us about this year's team. Give us the breakdown. What does Realtown look like this year? They look pretty good. We got a big offensive line. They go about, I guess, average about 285, 290. And we got some real fast running backs. We went back to the wishbone this year that Coach Webster and Coach O'Neill used to run. So it looks better. Yeah, the flip from the uh, from the spread down to the wishbone. Now it's more a uh, uh, kind of that Jackie O'Neill physical football style, right? You, yes, you know, sir. Folks in real town are used to that, aren't they? Yes, sir. That's what everybody wanted to go back to. We got the line to do it this year. We got a big, strong offensive line. We got one guy, Logan Dillard. He's uh, six five, about two ninety five. I wouldn't want to line up in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Me either. I can promise you. All right, so how do you feel about the year? Go ahead and tell us, what you, is this team going to the playoffs? I don't think we'll lose a nothing this year. Oh, okay. With the schedule, we, got, we had a hard schedule last year. We was in the uh, 3A with all them teams out of Montgomery. You can't compete with them private schools. It's, it's tough hard. sometimes, no doubt. Yeah. Well, we we believe uh, we believe Real Town's on the right track. It looks like it this year, and uh, uh, of course we're we're looking forward to uh, seeing your trek to 600 games for the Real Town Rebels. We appreciate we appreciate you talking with us here today. And anything you want to leave us with? Some wisdom on the Rebels this year? Uh, not really. My grandson he played in college ball for Huntington. Yeah, and he told me I could not miss a Real Town ball game and come see him play on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah, well, you got to get to – if you're going to miss one, miss number 601, right? I probably, I probably won't miss one the next year because uh, the first game next year they play is out in Wash, the state of Washington. Whoa. So yeah, that, I'll, I'll be flying out there with them. Right, that, yeah, that's uh, that's quite a trip out there, too. Yes, yeah, sir. We'll be rooting for your grandson, too. Well, listen, uh, okay. tell, tell everybody over there in Tallahassee and Notasoga that we said hello and we appreciate your time today and – uh, appreciate you coming on and talking a little real town football with us. All right. Thank you. God bless you. All right. God bless you. That is Mr. Ralph Lee, super fan of the Real Town Rebels, joining us here on the Spotlight interview on the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show. It's presented by Southeastern Land Group. Whether you're buying or selling rural land in the Southeast, Southeastern Land Group is the place to start. Visit selandgroup.com. Thanks again to Mr. Ralph Lee. And uh, we'll be following his quest to get to that 600th game coming up this season. Welcome back to the AHSA Radio Network Scoreboard Show. And, uh, you know, what a joy. I mean, you know, we all have something that we love to do. And, you know, some, some people go to a lot of concerts. And, you know, I know somebody who's been to like 33 KISS concerts, right? Uh, but, you know, for, for Ralph Lee, it's, it's supporting Real Town High School football. He played there uh, from 59 to 64. And uh, I don't know if anybody, you know, all of a sudden just one day says, you know what, I'm going to go 600 straight games. Yeah, it I just think kinda happens. it just kind of It just happens. You look up life. and you've been to 100 straight. And it's yeah. like, what? And, you know, I'll keep going. Yeah. It's kind of like the Forrest Gump thing, right? So I got to, you know, I got, I got to California and I turned around and kept going, right, you yeah. know. I, and you don't keep doing it if you don't love it. <laughs> That's right. Well, and, and I tell you what, he was a wealth of knowledge about the history of Realtown High School football, about uh, the coaches, about this current team. I mean, he had, he had one of the best breakdowns of this current team that we've had from anybody all year. Uh, so, anyway. And as we found Mr. out last week, back to the bone. That's right. Back <laughs> to the wishbone uh, down at Realtown. And the, those folks, uh, they like the wishbone down there. I don't blame them. They won a lot of games with the wishbone. Yes, it is. <laughs> Ralph Lee joined us tonight on our Spotlight segment. We appreciate him so much. Uh, all right, with that said, it is time to get back into some more scores. we got a couple of scores on the fours left for you tonight before we close the thing out. So let's get to it right now. Scores on the fours is presented by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles. Andy Graham as your 3A top 10. Number one, Piedmont over Plainview, 34 to 21. It was number two, Mars Hill over Clements, 52 to 8. Number three, St. James over Greensboro, 41 to 5. Number four, Gordo 
over midfield 56 to 13. It was number five op taking down Providence Christian 24, I'm sorry, 20 to 14. Number six Mobile Christian over XL 35 to 14. Winfield had the week off, number seven. Number eight Strawn over the number two A or the number four team in two A Clark County 35 to 21. Number nine Alabama Christian falls to Trinity Presbyterian 20 to 14. And number 10, Houston Academy over Ashford, 49 to 16. In 2A, number one, the Fife Red Devils. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Fife gets a win, 49 to 6. Number two, Highland Home survives. Number six, Lynette, 28 to 18, the final there. Number three, GW Long is upset, mild upset, by number five, Ariton, 34 to 18. It was number four, Clark County. Uh, 21, 3A, number 8, strong 35. It was number 7, Pisco, with a 40-28 to 28 win over Collinsville. Number 8, J.U. Blackshear, is upset by Chickasaw, 40-20. to 20. It was number 9, B.B. Kilmer, with a 32-7 to 7 win over Rambert. And number 10, Aliceville, with a 56 to nothing win over Francis Marion. We'll come back, and uh, we'll do one, we'll do it. We'll do a little open segment next. We got college football to talk about, right? Absolutely. Yeah, let's do that. That's coming up next on the AHSAA Radio Network. You want the best opportunity to be successful in life. You deserve that opportunity. Well, you just happens to be in our motto, central to you, central to your success. Your future is right now. Don't wait. Make your dreams a reality by enrolling at Central Alabama Community College. Register today at CACC.edu. Hillaby Towers is an affordable senior citizens community located in Alexander City on Highway 22 East. Spacious one bedrooms are available now. Great location, peaceful setting, Comfortable living where pets are allowed and utilities are included. Call today to find out more information on Alexander City's best kept secret, 256-329-0552. That's Hillaby Towers in Alexander City. Have you met your local farmer's insurance agent, Patrick Holina? He proudly serves Tallapoosa County and Alexander City families and businesses and is ready to review your existing policies or provide a no-obligation quote today. Call the Holina Agency at 256-234-0037 or stop in today at 704 Commerce Drive to get smarter about your insurance. Again, that's the Holina Agency, 256-234-0037. We are farmers. Underwritten by Farmers, Truck Fire Insurance Exchanges and Affiliates. Products not available in every state. Dable is home to Lake Martin Community Hospital and Lake Martin Family Medicine, both a division of Ivy Creek Healthcare. With great physicians, nurse practitioners, and nurses who provide extraordinary compassionate care for Dable and surrounding Lake Martin areas. Medicaid, Medicare, and most private insurances are welcome. For your home health and hospice needs, you may also use Ivy Creek Home Health and Ivy Creek Hospice. Ivy Creek always providing quality care in the communities our patients call home. Finding a job might be tough, but starting your new career has never been easier. Wellborn Cabinet in Ashland has a wide array of career opportunities with benefits. General labor production, skilled cabinet builders, product assembly line, shipping, over-the-road truck drivers, clerical, marketing, security, daycare, office clerks, and so much more. Apply in person, 38669 Highway 77 South in Ashland, or online at wellborn.com. Building cabinets, building careers, and building our community. The heat is on, and nowhere gives you more than KiaOfAuburn.com. First, we give you more for your trade-in. Just scan the code to find out how much. Next, the all-new Kia Sportage is here, and you'll be ready for anything. Then, at KiaOfAuburn.com, you can custom order your new Kia just the way you want. Want more? Check out our selection of certified pre-owned Kias with 165-point inspection, complete protection plans, and so much more. Selection, price, trade-in value. You always get it all at Kia of Auburn. Kia of Auburn, where you're always number one.
It's time for this week's AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show Team of the Week, celebrating the history and traditions of some of Alabama's top programs. This week's AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show Team of the Week is the Lynette Panthers. Lynette fielded their first team in 1920 and saw their first undefeated season in 1949, their first playoff appearance in 1971, and first region championship in 1975. Overall, the Panthers have won an incredible seven mythical state championships, two state playoff championships, and an unbelievable 20 region championships, including the last five in a row. With an overall record of 598 wins, 367 losses, and 25 ties, the Lynette Panthers sport a 62% overall winning percentage and a 173-73 region record. They've produced 173 All-State players, six NFL players, and have spent a total of 24 weeks ranked number one in the state. The Lynette Panthers, this week's AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show Team of the Week. All right, welcome back. It is the final segment here, the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show for this week. JJ and Andy with you. And, uh, Andy, appreciate you filling in again. My pleasure. All right, so let's uh, – Let's talk a little bit about tomorrow. We'll start with Auburn, San Jose State. I think it's another one of those games, kind of like last week with Mercer. Uh, you want to you want to see execution. You want to see crispness. You want to see, you know, some energy in the stadium, especially you know in the first half, and uh, you know a team that looks organized and 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 with a plan and. You know, that comes out and handles business. Am I wrong? Is that what we're looking for? Absolutely. Last week, you only had three penalties. You want to say that again? Don't want to see a sloppy game. Hopefully, the rain holds off and you can have a, you know, a, a decent field. But, yeah, I, I, to be perfectly honest with you, J.J., I'm not sure Mercer's not better than San Jose State. Right. Uh, San Jose State almost lost to an FCS team last week. They gave up seven sacks to Portland State. <laughs> right. Okay? Uh, so, Auburn ought to be able to do whatever they want to do in this game. And they ought to be able to do it well, and a lot of people ought to play. Come out of it, uh, hopefully injury free, and get ready for Penn State. That's yep. that's the plan. That's right? the plan. All right, so let's talk about the other game uh, that is kind of on everyone's mind. One eleven a.m. kickoff. I don't know what kind of that's Fox, baby. Oh, uh, what kind of crazy person put that together? Uh, but eleven a.m. kickoff. Alabama travels to Austin, Texas. I mean, that's a just in terms of just generic college football. Alabama at Texas, that's a big game. No doubt about it. I think every college football fan kind of, you know, gets a little uh, a little twinge when you say Alabama and Texas on the road, not at a neutral site. Right. So that, that's, a, that's a big deal. Uh, I don't think Texas is ready to compete. Uh, but they, there's probably going to be some energy there. And they probably – I think Sark is good enough to develop a plan that could – uh, you know, maybe they jump out, and I, I wouldn't be shocked if Texas jumped up ten to nothing, and then lost, you know, forty-eight to seventeen. Yeah. You know, I, 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 yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I'm, I'm feeling you on that. I kind of, it feels like one of those games to me, where Texas has a lot of energy in the first half, first quarter. You know what I mean? And they come out with, you know, kind of all on fire. Sark has a good plan, you know, uh, for those first couple of possessions. Um, but I think I, I, I just, I'm, I'm like you, I don't think Texas is there yet. They need a couple of more recruiting classes like this past one to get close. And I think, I think Alabama will kind of do that Anaconda thing, right? Where they sort of, they squeeze the life out of you over the course of two or three more quarters. And by the end of the third quarter, you look up and it's, you know, 38 to 14 or 38, 17, something like that. Um. So I think you and I are kind of on the same page there. Yeah. Yeah. No. Probably an embarrassment for Texas ultimately. Well, you know, again, an embarrassment. You can get embarrassed, right? That that's one of those like where it's forty nine to nothing at the half and you just kinda Like Oregon got embarrassed last week. Yeah, like Oregon got embarrassed last week. That can happen. Uh I actually expect Texas to put up a fight and maybe I'm wrong. We'll we'll find out tomorrow. So I I, I expect that. Doesn't mean I'm gonna get that. That's what I'm expecting. We'll be back on the air next Friday night, 10 to midnight, for another edition of the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show. Luke will be back, we think. He better. Yeah, we'll, we'll find out. Let's go to scores on the fours one more time, Andy. 1A Top 10. Number one, Brantley falls to number three, Elba, 42 to 35. Number two, Leroy over Choctaw County, 33 
to nothing. It was number four, Linden and Marengo. Apparently, that took place in the Twilight Zone because still don't can't, can't find a score on that one. But uh, I'm sure somebody did end up winning that game. Yes. Uh, number five, Sweetwater over R.C. Hatch, 47 to 14. Valley Head had an open week. The number 16. Number seven, Pickens County over Barry, 62 to zero. Number eight, Spring Garden over Victory Christian, 42 to 14. Number nine, Meek over 3A Colbert Heights, 24 to 17. And number 10, Decatur Heritage falls to Crusa Christian, 35 to 21. In the AISA, number one, Otaga over Fort Dale, 35 to 10. No score on Patricia and Pickens, number two, Patricia. Number three, Make it East, 35 18 over Hooper. Number four, Jackson, 44 to zero over South Choctaw. Number five, Lee Scott, 48 to six over Morgan. Number six, Glenwood, 34 7 over Bessemer. Number seven, Lowndes, 42 to 18 over Southern. Number eight, Crenshaw Christian is defeated by number 10, Chambers, 38 to six. It was number nine, Clark Prep, 74 to 30 over Snook. Also, uh, the Wilcox Wildcats get a win over Sparta, so it's a good night in Possum Bend, Alabama. And the Atlanta Braves now have a one-game lead on the New York Mets in the National League East, so it's a good night for America. That being said, that scores on the fours. It's brought to you by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles. We'll be back next Friday night. Have a wonderful weekend. See you soon. Take a knee. Let's go over this again. Who starts off with a real Coke taste? Coca-Cola. And then Coca-Cola pitches the real Coke taste to who? Coca-Cola. How is Coca-Cola going to give a real Coke taste to itself? Take a lap, genius. Coca-Cola takes a snap and then pitches the real Coke taste to Coke Zero running up on the right. You got it? Yeah. At that point, we fake punt the real Coke taste. Who fakes the punt? Coke, uh, Coke, Coke Zero. Zero. Take a lap. Coke Zero. Real Coke taste. Zero calories. Hello, my name is Dave Milton with Southeastern Land Group. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our company. We sell farmland and timberland in Alabama and the surrounding states. Not only do we have a land sales division, but we also have a timber sales division where we can help you with your timber sales and your timber appraisal. There's 22 of us in our group scattered throughout the southeastern United States. We are a full service land and timber sales company. We do with farmland, timberland, cattle property, poultry farms. 866-751-LAND. Go to the website, selandgroup.com. Taste of the South starts out here. However you roll into work, you can bring the flavor with Jack's Breakfast Catering. Huge scratch-made buttermilk biscuits and hearty breakfast sandwiches, mixed or matched, starting at just $15. Don't forget to add delicious fresh ground Royal Cup coffee and classic breakfast sides, because great work starts with great breakfast. Breakfast Catering, starting at $15 from Jack's. All about the South. Take home your AHSAA officially licensed merchandise today. Just click ahsaa.teamip.com and shop for event t-shirts, sweatshirts, tie-dye designs, or add your name to get your gear personalized. Team fans can get an official state championship apparel at our official online store. You pick it, we'll make it with our digital to garment technology. Hot off the press and sent straight to you. Or at your next championship game, check out Team IP's booth. Visit ahsaa.teamip. Hey honey, it's mom. Just wanted to call and check in, see how everything's going. You'll probably say not to worry. Everything is great. But we just, we miss you. I'll call you back later. Hey, how are you? <laughs> and tell me everything. Everything's great. I love it here. SAA Radio Network. You've been listening to the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show. Presented by Jacksonville State University, the Alabama Department of Transportation, Jacks. <laughs>
Main Street Family Care, Russell Dewitt Centers, Southern Union State Community College, Southeastern Land Group, and by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles. This is the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show.